Hello, this is an Astroneer tutorial about how to make timers, specifically canister timers and auto arm timers. So the first thing I want to say is technically anything can be a timer. Uh, what we have here is we just have a soil centrifuge uh, that when powered will turn on and off the power sensor. You can do the same thing with a research uh, research chamber. So the power goes off and it sends out a trigger and then it'll take however long uh, the research sample or the soil centrifuge or even a small printer. There you go, see, output. And uh, all of these will give you output input for the time it runs. Unfortunately, they all consume stuff. So um, they're not super great if you want a consistent timer. Um, two other slightly inconsistent timers are the wind timer, which is basically just a small wind turbine and a power sensor on a medium platform. And then, uh, so this this will uh, give you an output anytime the wind starts or stops. And then you have the same thing with a solar panel, uh, small solar. So this will give you an output uh, every when it turns to night or when it turns to day. So these are kind of uh, inconsistent timers or consume uh, uh, resources. If you want to make a, uh, a timer that is consistent and is, it, has, it doesn't consume races, resources, then you want to make either a canister timer or an auto arm timer. So what a canister timer is, is you have a canister on a platform with a, a single storage unit with a storage sensor that's set to fill or empty. So what this does is as it fills up, it triggers the storage sensor, which gives you your output, but it also um, triggers the uh, canister to pull stuff back in. So this is uh, basically an eight second timer. So the canisters contain 32 items, but it takes about 34 seconds to completely empty or fill them. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna round that down to a second for this video. But uh, it just, just a note that it's, it's slightly higher than a second. Um, you can make uh, uh, different time timers with the canister timer by either changing the storage. So this is a 24 timer, and this is a, a 32 second timer. You can also make a one second timer um, if you set the storage sensor on the canister itself with a single resource in it. Um, and set it to empty or not empty. So this runs basically every second. It just goes over and over and over. Um, for canister timers, so the problem with a canister timer is because the canister has to be on the same platform as the uh, single storage that you're using, and you have to have the storage, the storage sensor can't be on the platform itself because then it'll sense what's in there. So it has to be on a single storage. Um, but what you can do to uh, change the times besides the, you know, you could make a two second, uh, eight second, or a 24 second uh, timer uh, like, like these, or 34. Um, if you want to decrease the time, you can put it on a, a, a bigger storage platform. And so in this case, both of these are running. This turns it into a four second timer because uh, uh, it, it basically halves the time. Uh, because you have two two things outputting and and inputting at the same time, you could add a, a third one, and then you could get a third of eight or a third of twenty-four as a timer uh, this way. And if you want to increase the time, what you can do, what you can do is you can uh, stack the timers. So in this case, we have uh, an eight-second timer. Uh, going to the storage sensor and instead of the storage sensor going back onto the uh, canister itself it goes on to another eight second timer and there it goes and so this this will give you eight seconds and then it will give you a, an output so you can um, stack timers together to get a specific amount of time that you want so they're you know both going and then it'll uh, trigger da, 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 and it'll keep going so that's, that's kind of how you uh, uh, set up uh, uh, canister timers. Um, this thing, so this thing is, is designed to um, give you uh, any amount of uh, time down to the second. So uh, from zero, you can put um, 
one to 32 resources in one of these containers and it will count that specific amount. So how this works is we have empty or uh, not empty on both of the containers going into two AND gates with uh, uh, power sensors sent to just lost, which either one will trigger um, the uh, uh, trigger both canisters. So there we go. So this is a four second timer and it'll just go back and forth, keeps going. Um, uh, I'm just gonna let it run for a second so you can see what the behavior is. So if you wanna you know, figure out how this works, there it is. And onto the, the, so the next type of timer is auto arm, time, auto arm timers. So these timers uh, are, are basically a set of auto arms uh, pointing in different directions uh, one's on, one's off, and then on one of the uh, platforms you have a storage sensor set to empty and fill. So in this case I turned it on, it swapped those around, it's going to pull off those, turn it, and then you know this one turns off, this one turns on, and then it goes back around. So um, there, if there's a slight uh, asymmetric nature to these in that there's, uh, when, when this one pulls off, uh, the, the final one, it automatically turns it off, so you have an extra resource here, but it quickly puts it uh, on the platform when it comes back. Um, so there is a slight asymmetry to that. You've got to be slightly careful if you're trying to get things uh, uh, very specific in terms of timing with your auto arm timers. Um, uh, you got to watch out for that. Um, also, auto arm timers consume power, so canister timers do not consume power. Auto arm timers, you know, consume basically two units of power uh, to keep them running. Um, you can uh, also do the same thing you can do with canisters, which is add um, add more storage to them to make them last longer. So these timers, the auto arm timers, are uh, can be significantly longer times than the canister timers, um, just because it takes basically three to four seconds for it to pull off a resource and put it on the the uh, the storage so um, these these run longer so this is like a 24 which 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 take a very long time to uh, um, to uh, actually empty and fill and stuff like that um, the uh, because uh, the storage sensors can be on the platform itself because the platform is separated from the auto arms so you can have the the storage sensor on the platform itself you can you have a lot more choice in terms of the timings you want so we have you can have a, a two a four resource time an eight a 10 a 16 a 24 a 26 a 32 and a 48 uh, uh, resource time now you you can't get much higher than 48 because the auto arm, uh, it, it, you, you gotta be within the circle of the auto arm. Uh, so over here, so you can see, you have to be within the circle of auto arm. So um, it's not gonna pick up much more than 48, but 48 is a very long time. Um, if you wanna get more specific than the, uh, uh, these, these, these times, these completely full, con completely empty um, uh, platforms, you can make uh, this. So this is a hybrid timer. Uh, what this has is it has a canister that's pulling uh, three resources in this case into the canister, and the auto arm timer is doing uh, is is pulling five resources. So um, for this hybrid approach, you got to make sure that um, the resource the uh, auto arms are pulling is um, is cannot go into uh, a canister um, because canisters have different uh, they they put they have a different places where they put stuff and different places where they start pulling stuff from. Um, if you have two resources that can go into the canister, more than likely it's gonna, you know, it'll pull one of the resources at random and then you won't get a five timer, you get like a three timer or it'll screw up where um, this will, will not be able to pull off the, the resources. Um, so this is kind of a hybrid approach um, if you wanna get very specific with auto arms. If um, you're having problems with canisters, so there are some issues at the moment where uh, canister, canister, canisters set to output are causing um, uh, slowdown in the game. So if you uh, 
want, if you do not want to use a canister, you can use this method, which is a five second timer. So we have, uh, or sorry, five resource timer. So we have uh, three resin going this way and five uh, compound going this way. Um, it's only going to trigger when all five compound is on here. The, you know, it's going to take off the three resin. So it's it's going to limit the time by the most abundant resource on on here. You can get pretty specific times with this. Um, uh, so that's 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 quite useful. Um, so the the that's kind of it for what the timers are, um, how you can use the timers. I have a couple of setups for that. Um, so this timer, the uh, the storage sensor is just for the output and we have a different input uh, button. So this, this could be some, some other type of input or if you just want to delay, um, this timer works out. So see, if I hit this, hit this button, it, it turns on the timer and uh, it, it gives you an output after the two resources have been put or pulled. Um, for this timer, you don't need uh, um, an extra resource on the auto arm because it's not the the storage sensor isn't switching it back and forth. Um, this is useful if you want to say, oh, um, you know, my resources are full, and now I need uh, to pull off two of them, and uh, and then trigger something. So uh, this this is kind of a delay timer uh, that that gives you um, yeah just a delay. Uh, another way uh, to do that is if you do not want your timers running all the time, or if you want something. You, you want to have logic where you have to have something incoming, uh, an input input uh, signal before the timer starts, you can do something like this. So what, what we have here is we have a button repeater, which is our input, which turns on this AND gate. So now that this is on, this, um, this oxygenator is on, and um, because we have two power going in, um, once, once this is on, when this goes on and off, it triggers your power sensor, which can swap um, your auto arm. So this, in this case, the 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 sensor only works when you have the uh, uh, the turn the button repeater on. So if I if I turn this off, it will uh, uh, stop. And because the uh, because uh, this oxygenator can turn it on and off, th if this is off. This can turn on and off without triggering the whole system to run again. Um, so you can turn on and off your sensors or on and off your uh, timers if you don't want them just running. You know, you have a bunch of them at your base and you're going to a different planet and you don't want to keep running them. Um, this is also for you, also useful is if you want uh, uh, your timers only running when you have resources. So in this case, I've set this up to uh, either empty or not empty. It's running on a, a storage silo. If I put something on here, it triggers the timer, and um, this will keep going. So this is this is useful if you want to say run a printer uh, while you have resources, and then turn off your timer once you don't have resources anymore. Um, so th those are a couple of examples of uh, interesting things you can do with the timers, or with with a little extra logic, you can um, uh, make some nice nice things. Um, we're going to go on to um, Useful times. So this is just kind of a collection of useful times uh, that I have found for the uh, soil centrifuge. I found that a time of uh, ten resources works very nicely. Um, it gives it enough time to centrifuge, offload, and then refill um, before it uh, uh, triggers immediately. It's almost exact uh, how how uh, well the ten works um, for the small printer. Uh, a time of five resources works nicely. Um, so uh, this is this is pretty close to how how um, long it takes. It takes uh, roughly 14 seconds for the small printer to print. Um, as you can see, we can wait for it. There it goes, and then boom, instant. Uh, very close. But uh, so the uh, um, soil centrifuge has en had enough time, and now it's uh, cycling again. So uh, this works nicely for small printer. For the medium printer, um, it's a little more awkward. It's a time of uh, 17 or 18, so it's a little bigger than the 16. Uh, so that's uh, uh, kind of annoying. Um, and for the large printer, it's uh, 42 resources. Um, so I don't know. I haven't found a use for automating uh, the, the large printer on a timer. Um, 
but if you want to, it's you can do a 42 resource auto arm timer. Um, for the uh, trade platform, it technically it's um, uh, 16 uh, resources for it to launch and return, but you want to give it another eight for um, auto arms to pull off whatever you've traded it for and to add another uh, up to eight scraps. So actually the 24 works nicely. So 16 plus eight is 24. Um, that works out nicely for uh, automating the trade platform. Um, there is an exception for the small printer. If you're printing any of the new, uh, the, the button repeater or any of the new sensors, they are very quick. So um, a two second timer is more than enough to, uh, um, uh, you know, have, have the, the, the printer enough, give enough, the printer enough time to print. Um, so those are kind of uh, just a couple of useful times that I found useful. Um, and that is the end of the video. Thank you for watching.